Ja fuhr, ja fuhr! Hans, Hans! Ja, die Amerikaner! Fühlen Sie es bisschen, dass wir sind wusste, als Eifern der Strecken geblieben. Hinter ihnen las ein Einweg der The Strong. There's SS the or Stan in the army of the German SS. army. There's a widespread disgust in the officer corps toward the crimes committed by the Nazis. The murder of civilians, the torture and starvation of prisoners, and the mass execution of Jews. My duty as an officer is no longer to save my country, but to save human lives. Hitler is not only the arch enemy of the entire world, but the arch enemy of Germany. A change must be made. Auf Wiedersehen, Fräulein! Oh, Scheiße! Panzerfaust! Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking Fanny Pack. Today we're going over a gun near and dear to most sauerkraut enjoy your hearts, and that is a gun known as the Car 98. Now, this is the renowned bad guy gun of our dear uh, bad guy enemy ancestors, the Germans of Nazi Germany from 1939, 1945, when we had that big uh, World War II thing. Now, before we dive into the gun, let's talk about the gear real quick. Now, the gear I'm walking for this video is just gonna be a little fanny pack. Um, you'll see in a future episode with the M1 Grand, <laughs> spoilers, uh, that kit is much more squared away. While all I had was a fanny pack, I would love to revisit some more German weaponry down the road, and I will probably dial in the German kit as well as my American kit as the channel grows and as the funds grow. One of my goals is to up the production value. Now, this is just the fanny pack I saw on the website, a little 40 chest self shilling. Now, with the gear out of the way, it's an old weapon. Made in 1940, it gets date marked right there. This gun to me, um, my big disclaimer to people on the channel is, uh, I'm no expert, take everything I say and do with a grain of salt. I'm no historian, I'm no Ian McCollum, I can break down you know, the, the history of the firearms, where this gun would have been made, like what factory, what month in the factory, and what they were serving at the, you know, the local cafe down the street. To me, this is one of those guns that I think is, <sighs> It has a lot of history, and you know, just like the M1 Grand that we have in the frame, I really wish that we could let this gun speak and listen to what it has to say, because the story I'll tell you with this gun and his personal relationship to me, I'll, I'll kind of divulge some info about myself. So, you know, I don't know if how the condition of this gun is with the um, with the front iron sight, if it's say if it's missing the front sight or missing the hood, because I know some of the Car 98s had a hood protector on it for the uh, front iron sight. I'm not sure if that's missing or if this is how this particular model should be. Um, and again, this goes back to, I'm not an expert of car 98s. I'm just an enjoyer and appreciator of the history involved with them. Now, all right, a little one-on-one -on -one for Lucas. Beep. Do, 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 do. Gentlemen, I hate to break into your personal time. Like I know you're on the toilet right now, taking care of personal business. But if you could, just like and subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. It really helps me out, and I, and I appreciate you bringing me into your private space. So how, how I came about to this weapon, I do own this weapon. It was gifted to my late father by a friend of his, and that friend, uh, he was a member of the 101st Airborne. Now, he would have been older than my dad, because my dad, he passed away in like his 60s. And this guy, I'm sure, has passed away too. So some parts of this puzzle, of this story, are indeed missing. So. 
I don't know the complete thing, but essentially what I believe happened is that this would have been a battlefield pickup by my dad's friend who would have been, you know, in the airborne. And I'm not sure which unit he was in with the airborne. Um, I think maybe it was 101st from what I heard. I could be wrong though. So that's the thing, you know what I mean? So, but to me, it holds a lot of history and I really wish this gun could talk. So with that out of the way, the personal connection of this weapon to me, um, you know, it's like, is is the who, I, I can't remember who made the Mauser, but it's like, are they sponsoring this video? Absolutely not. I, I guarantee all the people that made this gun are all dead. Most of the guys that carried these guns are all dead. Um, you know, it's getting to that point in our history where a lot of the World War II vets are passing away if they haven't already. You know, we're looking at probably what, 70 years since that conflict, 80 years since that conflict, you gotta think, you know, we're in 2021, right? kicked off you know 1940 well, 1939 September 1st I know now as far as the legend of German engineering goes yes this gun lives up to it even you know 80 years later this gun's still going pretty strong and it's doing really good as far as a bolt gun concern you know I really wish I had the parts and maybe I will snag the parts but to make this a weapon that can have magnification of some kind on it you know having some glass to some capacity That'd be really cool. I, that would hark down to the pop culture of that German snipers, you know, menacing the the Allied forces. That'd be really cool to, to have some, you know, access to that. Maybe you can get some specific driven rounds for, you know, precision sniping, right? Sniping. Um, Cause I'm not a sniper, but I do like the idea of getting into the marksmanship game. Word salads aside, that was a Caesar salad, running this gun. Now, ergonomically, I'll talk about the M1 Garand in the next video, but ergonomically, this gun fits well in the hand, a little bit skinnier than, say, an M1 Garand because there's no gas system running underneath it. And it fits well in the shoulder, has a little bit more kick than, say, an M1 Garand, of course. That's because there is no, you know, recoil system in there. It's just a straight up bolt gun. To me, it's wild. It'd be wild to me as a modern thinking man and keep in mind, the guys that fought in this conflict were also modern thinking men, but the advent of weapon technology, we have seen such a crazy uh, progression of weapons tech as far as, as, far as well, in, in the grand scheme, but as far as, you know, small arms go, the weapon tech advancements have been astronomical. So you gotta think, imagine being a young, you know, German guy and you're issued a Car 98. You don't probably know any better, but you're like, sick, I got one of the best fighting battle rifles Known to man, I'm gonna go do German soldier things. We got sick armor, we got sick, you know, uh, Luftwaffe. We're gonna go tear up some Brits, we're gonna go tear up some Russians and Poles. Uh, but then you start encountering these American GIs, or you start encountering maybe even allied forces that have M1 Garands. You start to think, oh crap, that guy can spit out eight rounds of 30 6 at me really fast. One thing that I found really crazy out here is typically when we're filming like a YouTube video, ammo conservation of you know not blowing through all the ammo for one shot comes into play right with this gun i didn't really have that issue because i'm really cycling each bullet every time i shoot with the m1 grand video that we filmed It's, I was burning through ammo, no problem. You gotta think side by side when these guys are meeting up in that kinetic event, it, it would have been wild to be on the receiving end of a bunch of dudes laying down hate with M1 Garands. Sure, I know I'm a German guy, but I got you know my buddy who's running, you know Hans, he's running the MG42 right down the battle line from me. But still, if I'm running this freaking bolt gun, I mean my NCO has an MP40. but that's only nine millimeter. How, how terrifying and effective is that gonna be out the distance? You know, where your battle engagement. So these are things, these are the weird things I think about. You know, like, you know when like your girlfriend or your wife's like, hey, what are you thinking about? And you're like, oh, nothing. To me, I'm thinking about like my engagement would have happened if I was a soldier on each side during World War II. What gun would I have chosen? That's, this is the stuff as guys that we think about. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm pretty sure it's just you two. Now the trigger pull, a <laughs> little classic gun guy review stuff. The trigger pull is actually really nice, like a two stage. You can kind of see that's, that's that first, it gets to that first wall right there and then boop, yeah. Recoil on this gun kind of sucks, especially when you're prone out, I found. Um, maybe it's something you just train into you and that's been ingrained into you. You just don't care about it because you're maybe more of a man back then. <sighs> I mean, you probably have to be like a man to actually want to fight against M1 Garands, but anyway, I'm simping too hard for the M1. Um, recoil was kind of uh, lackluster in the sense of it was punching my shoulder, but it's not terrible because I actually have meat up here. If you're a skinnier dude and you're just nothing but, you know, skin and bones, and may hurt more. I don't know. You'll be fine. Just power through it. The sights are wild. It's really, it's really ranged out to like 2,000 meters. And I'm like, 
the, the bullets, the bullets heck and lord, just an eight millimeter bullet, right? So hey, if I can hit something at 2000 meters, I'm gonna be really happy. First round of beers during Oktoberfest are on, you know, I don't know, my buddy. Reloads, I was having trouble with the reloads on this, trying to be all fast, fast and whatnot. Um, maybe that's just a training scar road, just getting in there. You can kind of see where there's a good little spot for your thumb if you're cranking them down in there to really seat the round. I wouldn't be stoked if I was a German to get this gun, knowing all the cool guns and stuff the Germans were making. I'd be like, hey, I want my SVG 44. Give me that mug right now if I was a German. Give me all, give me all the meth and the SVG 44 and all the Panzerfaust and grenades that I can, and I'll probably go get clacked by some Russian girl with a Mosin in no time. So these are the things, yet again, that dwell upon my head rent-free. What about you, camera guy? Do you have anything you want to add to the Car 98 uh, discussion? Uh, if you own a Mauser and you sporterize it, I don't give a fuck if you accepted jesus in your heart you're going to hell <laughs> straight to hell straight to the bottom joe another sponsor of this video is going to be kalashnikov usa they have some wicked sick products over at their website i think uh papa thumb just did a video on one of their products the kp9 really interesting stuff they got over there now they're just paying me to say this but i do believe that i want a kp9 oh no what have i become so head on over there there's gonna be a link in the description down below for kalashnikov usa you know, one thing about this firearm that uh, is not going to happen, you know, because this doesn't have a soul, but I really wish this gun could talk and, you know, kind of tell the secrets that, you know, this particular firearm had, you know what I mean? The German people will take his rightful place as the masters of the world. Oh my God. Maybe not. Maybe I don't want it to talk. Unstas heis bum 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 Erika. Designs still hold true today. Now, bolt guns, there have been plenty of bolt guns based around the Mauser chamber, bolt, and that whole design, you know, even the American Springfield, what, 1903, or maybe the 1903 model, they, I think they were paying royalties to one of the German manufacturers for the same type of design. Of course, the gun is fed by stripper clips or by, you know, the old fashioned handy way. Um, no in block clips going into that bad boy. No sick ejection pings giving away your position. That's a joke. You're not gonna be able to hear anything over eight rounds of 30 got six anyway. Um, if you do, then you are a better man than I. Can you imagine also, like, you weren't in steel helmets and you're firing these huge calibers in proximity to your other boys? Yeah, okay. Hearing damage out the wazoo. Well, Jim, I think that about wraps it up on the Car 98, the Mauser, the good old bolt gun of our bad guys from World War II. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to support the channel in any way, shape, or form. Like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments, I already sacrificed the algorithm god, a god of which who likes Beethoven and bratwurst and sauerkraut. He's German for this episode. Patreon's an excellent way to support the channel as well as merchandise helps the channel out all the costs of running a channel. Um, auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>